stay with us now as we go along with Snooks and her daddy when they visit an art museum so that Snooks may absorb a little culture. It already has been a long day and daddy should know better, but we find them finishing a shopping trip and hurrying on their way to the museum before it closes. Let's listen in. Come on, Snooks. Let's get out of this drugstore. Who'd you call up, Daddy? I called up Frank Morgan. Come on, let's go. You want some candy? No. Mm, I want some candy. Now listen. I took you to the park, and you had three tons of ice cream. I took you to the zoo, and you ate all the peanuts and Cracker Jack in sight. I took you for a long trolley car ride, and you had 17 packages of chewing gum. What more do you want? Some candy. Well, you can't have it. You'll get sick. I am sick. Oh, all right. I'll buy you a little candy. What do you want? Some jelly beans? No. I want the thing over there. Why, that says $8. I like it. You're getting more like your mother every day. Make up your mind. What kind of candy do you want? That one. Well, you can't have that. That's a 25-pound chocolate rabbit. I want it. Oh, don't be silly, Snooks. It's not for sale. No, yes, it is, mister. Oh, who asked you? Well, I own the store. Do you like this rabbit, little girl? Uh-huh. Well, you can't have it. Oh, give her the rabbit. How much? No, oh, eight dollars. <laughs> oh, here. Come on, Snooks. I want to eat the rabbit now, Daddy. Now, listen, if you eat all that chocolate now, you'll explode. Give me half of it. I don't want to. Well, then just give me a little tiny piece. No. But I'll let you kiss me when my mouth is still gooey. Give me that rabbit. <laughs> Please, Snooks, don't make a fuss on the street. I want to go home. You want to go home? Yeah. <laughs> That's a hot one. Well, come on, here's the Museum of Art. Let's go in and look around. What's in there, Daddy? Oh, statues and paintings. Works of art. Now, don't make any noise in here. Come on. Daddy. What? That lady ain't got no clothes on. It's only a statue. As a rule, statues don't wear clothes. Why? Uh, because it's considered more artistic without clothes. Why? I don't know. Is it like the burlesque show? What are you talking about? Well, when Mommy hollered at you for going to the burlesque Never show. mind that. Your Mommy wouldn't know art if it crawled up and bit her. Did they bite you into the burlesque Forget show? Forget about the burlesque show. I go there once for a lark, and I'm a dead pigeon for the rest of my life. Now look around and get educated. Oh, there's Uncle Louie. Where? Right there. That's not Uncle Louie. That's a statue of the missing link. It looks like Uncle Louie. I don't care. It's the missing link, and it's called Picanthropus erectus. Why? Well, that's his scientific name. Some scientists claim that men are descended from monkeys. They discovered the Cro-Magnon man, the Neanderthal man, and... And Uncle Louie. No! And several less anthropoidal species. I don't know how it works out, but they fit this thing into it somehow. Which thing? Uncle Louie. I mean the missing link. <laughs> That's part of evolution. What's evolution? I just told you. Some people believe all men were once monkeys. Do you believe it, Daddy? It doesn't interest me. Why? 
because I don't care if my grandfather was an ape. Did your grandmother care? Oh, leave me alone. Now come over here and look at the more pleasant statues. Oh, here's the famous Venus de Milo. She ain't got no arms. No. Well, that's what happens to little girls who bite their fingernails. <laughs> come on. Oh, look it. What? There's a man riding a horse. Well, what of it? The horse ain't got no head and the man ain't got no feet. That's a centaur. He's a legendary figure supposed to be half man and half horse. Well, where's the other half? There isn't any other half. Why? Oh, I don't know. Keep moving and get educated. It's almost time to go home. Oh, well, here's a wonderful painting. It's called Utopia. Oh, that's for me, boy. You like it, Daddy? Oh, who wouldn't? Just remember that name, Utopia. It's a place where everything is wonderful and nobody has little girls. <laughs> and nobody has bridge parties. And all daddies lead a wonderful life. And everything is milk and honey. Understand? Understand. I'll educate you. Now, what would you call a land that's flowing with milk and honey? Sticky. Oh, what's the use? You'll grow up to be a bridge player. Well, tell me about this picture, Daddy, or that one. That's the Colosseum in Rome. How'd you know? I've been there. Keep moving. What's this one, Daddy? That's the Bay of Naples in Italy. And I know that because I've been there, too. And that picture next to it is the Inferno. What's that? It's an artist's conception of Hades, where the devil is. You've been everywhere, ain't you, Daddy? Yeah, sure. Oh, here's the Egyptian room. Want to see the mummies? Is mommy playing bridge in there? No, no, these are Egyptian mummies. Well, where'd they keep the daddy? This mummy has nothing to do with daddy. Well, I know, because you went to the boy last Stop show. Stop that! Now, this mummy is a dried-up bag of crumbling bones bound in Egyptian trappings. Yeah, I'm gonna tell her what you said. I'm not talking about your mummy. Why? And if the shoe fits, she can wear it. Now, come on. Let's enjoy these wonderful paintings and then get out of this broken-down place. What's that nice old lady, Daddy? Um... Uh, Oh, it's called A Study in Black and White. It's by Whistler. I want to hear it whistle. It can't whistle. I want to hear it whistle. That's the artist's name, Whistler. Oh. Oh, Snooks. Look at this gigantic mural. It's the famous Circus Maximus by Corot. What's them lions doing? Well, that was a sport that cruel Roman emperors used to indulge in. To satisfy the bloodthirsty appetites of the barbarous rulers, they turned loose 10 or 12 of the most ferocious and hungry lions they could find. And then into this huge arena with those loose lions, they pushed some poor innocent citizens. See them? Uh-huh. That painting depicts the ancient savagery and all its horrible cruelty. See the grinning, hideous faces of the spectators? The ravenous, yawning jaws of the lions? And the plight of the poor citizens about to be devoured? Oh, I, I'm sorry, Snooks. I didn't think you'd be so touched. Oh, it's awful, Daddy. Well, I'm, I'm glad to see you're able to see the pain of such lust. Why I'm crying? <laughs> well, 
then what are you crying about? The little lion in the corner and you get many. Oh, what's the use? Come on home. Let's just be glad Snooks wasn't twins or triplets. <laughs> Tonight's players were Jay Summerfield as the long-suffering and short-tempered daddy, with baby Snooks, a.k.a. Fanny Bryce, played by our Donna Amesmeyer. Also heard were Ellie Babka as baby brother Robespierre. How would you like that waking you up at night? <laughs> the department store manager selling hats was Rob Krasneski, with Dr. John Gelsomino as the candy store clerk. Again, our music department is directed by Dr. John, with sound effects produced by Bill Escobedo. Enhancing each month's show is our technical staff, John V. Gelsomino and Ed Zeta. And we couldn't present these programs at all if it weren't for the Riverside Township Board and its supervisor, Richard Tusher. Until we see you again, this is your announcer, John Wirtz, saying, Good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House, the coffee that's always good to the last drop. Thank you one and all for coming to this balmy evening. Be sure to stop by next month, February 27th, same time, same station, to hear and see the Riverside Township radio players present The Ghost and Mrs. Mirror. We wish you all a good night and safe journey home. See you soon. Thank you.